First of all, my name is Hal, WB4AEG, Abel Easy George, and at one time I was a little heavier, they called that always eating groceries. So, but um, I was kind of uh, flim flammed a little bit. I got an email from Bill. He says, we need someone to do the program on CW because the original guy couldn't make it, but Joel suggested that you come and do it. And I, I took it to mean that he couldn't be here, but obviously that wasn't the case. No, you're the expert. Yeah, yeah, right. But um, I guess Joel, myself, and uh, David, and Felton there is the only four CW guys in the room. Is that right? Does anybody else work CW? Paul does. Paul, okay. And I first met Paul how many years ago down in Carsville? Probably 20. But um, I only operate CW. Excuse me, but Steve also is uh, the yes. CW business. Okay. Well, you know, uh, the, um, they've got a slow speed uh, net. Uh, they've got Georgia State net on CW, which is one of the traffic nets, but they have a slow speed net too. If you guys want to get in there and listen to it, I think it's listed on the, the uh, Georgia single sideband net page. But. Uh, for the last 20 years, I've worked nothing but CW, and uh, back in the day, that's the way you got started in ham radio with CW. You didn't have an option. You want a license, this is what you do. So if you uh, whined about learning CW, then that's tough, because you had to start out as a novice. You kept that uh, ticket for one year. You only operate 75 watts input power, and the reason they used input power is because no one had a watt meter to measure output power with. So, and you had to be crystal controlled, and you only operated on the, uh, and my receiver, placed about that wide, uh, on 80, 40, and 15 meters, then you did have AM privileges on two meters. There was any, no FM at the time. But uh, the novice license was not renewable at the time. So if you didn't make it, tough. So, um, not saying that that's the way it ought to be now because the numbers would be really declining. Um, I noticed AWRL was complaining the other day about not enough uh, guys getting their ham tickets. Well, there's plenty of guys getting their ham tickets. They're just not getting on the air, I think, is the majority of the problems. And AWRL's got their own issue in that um, only one-sixth of the population of hams in the United States are AWRL members, and that's the problem for them from a business standpoint. But let's talk a little bit about the um, history of Morse code. As you know, it started in the mid-1840s by a guy by the name of Samuel Morris, who invented the code because, basically, of the railroad. There was no way of uh, notifying of a wreck train or a stop train on a railroad track, and that just caused additional wrecks. So they, uh, Samuel figured there had to be a better way, and he was a uh, a message deliverer, I think, at the time, what he did by bicycle. And so they came up with the um, American Morse code, which is totally different than the International Morse code, because they didn't have any ways to make da, so they did clicks and double clicks. Like A is dit da, B click, 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 two clicks. So it was a number of clicks and distance between the clicks. And of course, when the wireless age came along, that didn't work out too well. And the first wireless transmitters were arc gap transmitters, where you had a high voltage, an adjustable arc, and the dial detector way off somewhere, and they listened to zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
two type oscillators. But one of the unique things, you guys were talking about FT8 and the other additional modes here a minute ago. That is excellent. But what if you didn't have that interface? It's called a computer. That'd be a little rough, wouldn't it? That's where CW still applies. And it's still by far the most effective method of weak signal communications when you have nothing but the decoder between the ears. And uh, I think uh, the Navy, as a matter of fact, reinstated CW as a backup mode of communications. But um, when Bill asked me to do a, a program by email, I asked him, I said, CW is pretty much self-explanatory. What am I supposed to do? And he said, anything you want to do. So I told him that I was going to do this, you know, a little off the cuff. But um, you guys ever hear of Pine Log, Georgia? Did you know the guy who invented the Vibraplex keys from Pine Log, Georgia? Horace Martin. Sometime in the late teens, 1915, 16, 17, somewhere along in there, he was a telegrapher at the Daresville Depot. And he came up with a, had to be a better way to send CW or send the clicks than what he was doing. So he came up with the Vibraplex. And if you Google Horace Martin um, Vibraplex, you'll see there's two or three, several pages on him. And it, even a picture of the first uh, Vibraplex key that he got patented. And he moved to New York City from the small town or community of Pine Log. And I guess got rich when he sold the patent. I don't know. But uh, CW has been around for a long time. I know, uh, Joel, how long have you been a ham now? 55 years, something like that? 55 plus. 55 plus, longer than me. So I call him Mr. <laughs> but uh, it's, guy asked me the other day, he said, you retired now? I said, yeah. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm a ham. He says, I mean, what do you do? I said, I'm a ham. If you're a ham, like Joel and I grew up being hams, when you, it's hard to explain. I mean, that's what I do most of the time. I don't have honeydews. I'm being a ham. And I hope you guys are taking it that serious too because that's the only way you're probably going to learn to CW. But um, there's many different ways to learn CW. Back in the day, the best way was to find a buddy. Uh, we call them Elmers now, that uh, sent CW to you at, uh, starting out at just, w w you know, send an A, and he said, that's an A, and send a B. And you usually learned them in five-letter word groups. And you always learned them as, uh, I, I use the keys on the typewriter, because you do it A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, you wind up memorizing it the wrong way. But... Um, Nowadays, with the computer and the internet, there's so many, so many different ways to learn it. I'm a member of a group called CW Ops, and it's an invitation only a group. I didn't know I was going to be a member, and I got an email one day that says, you have been selected, and what happens, either you talk to someone, or uh, they heard you on the air or something, and you have to be carrying on the QSO at at least 25 words per minute, and then they recommend you and then voting you to be a member. Well, in that, the group is oriented only towards CW. They have something called the CW Academy. And if you can leave your email address with me, I'll send that to you. And it's free. And they do it more like a, a college course. They, they have degrees of, um, of um, I guess you might say, hardness in the way they start the course and all. But uh, it's well worth your time. But there's many more places than that to learn CW on, online. Plus, AWRL still sends code practice nightly at, uh, from 5 to 25 words a minute. Now, I did that a lot when I was a kid because they had no other way. Living in the dares, we know, making a long-distance telephone call to Calhoun was 65 cents. I, my dad didn't permit that. So I ran across Barry Wright, K4WWY, one day. And my mother would carry me to his house every Wednesday for two hours, and we studied CW and the theory. And uh, you couldn't uh, take the novice file mail 
and uh, which is the way most of us did because who, who, who had a car to go to downtown Atlanta at 13 years old or something like that. So, But anyway, um, you're talking about the effectiveness of uh, FT8, and Joel and I were talking about it a minute ago. Well, one of the guys at the club in uh, Rome was telling me that he worked uh, this such and such a DX station the other day, and he said he was so weak, he didn't even show up on the spectrum. And I said, so you didn't work in one? He says, yeah, I did. I said, how you know? He said, it showed up on my screen. I said, so your computer worked this guy. You didn't work anyone. And it's still a good way to work DX. I see him doing it on 50 megahertz. You won't know the band's open at all, but you can look on the, the cluster, and they're working stations all across the U.S. on 50 megahertz. So, And it's really effective for EME and uh, Meteor scout, uh, Scatter Communications. But I'm not into that yet. And I may uh, uh, attack RTTY one of these days. That's going uh, be my stab into the digital world, I guess. But uh, I'm, let's say I'm not too impressed with FT8 or JT65 or any of those digital modes. But um, if you are, that's great. But if you want to learn CW, there's only one way to do it. Find somebody that's good at it and become their friend and they'll show you the ropes. So, any questions? Joel. One of the things that um, I think that is always helpful is uh, obviously to work with somebody else, just like you and I. We've had elders in our past, and I'm, I'm sure that anyone that's in this club is interested um, you, even though you may not be a member of this club, you certainly are available by telephone sure. to meet someplace and to discuss how to do this. Bill uh, and I met the other day and um, I told him some of my reasons uh, why I, I like CW and, and also uh, how to learn the, the code. And uh, in the course of our conversation, uh, told him that I, I had some old cassette uh, tapes that were uh, <coughs> made by ARRL and so I provided those for him and he's in the process of learning the code. I think that's probably one of the most difficult parts is getting that mm -hmm. start. And these, I listened to these tapes, um, I, I tried to copy them, and <coughs> which you aren't supposed to do. Uh, but I couldn't get my uh, recorder to copy them at a level that I could hear it. But during the time that it was going really fast, I was listening to the code, <laughs> copying at whatever, 30 or 40 minute, words per minute, you know, all that real high speed stuff. And I said, well, well I can still copy that. Um, so I think that um, once you get the basics down, um, it, it just builds on uh, on that particular. Just like playing golf, you got to play the game. Um, I also taught my daughters how to do the, the code by just driving along at nighttime and couldn't hardly stay awake. So, you know, taught them the code by, well, that's, what, what sign is that about there? What word is that? And so I would tell them how they would see what the word was, what it was spelled out, and then I began to tell them. Uh, how it was spelled in code. So they have learned at least the rudiments of Morris. Mm -hmm. So I think that it really is a, it's something that everyone has to take in, uh, as an individual challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that it can be taught in a group setting unless you happen to be in the Army and that's the requirement to go on to the next step, or if you're in a pilot training program that you have to learn the code. Uh, be able to identify Morse code letters uh, on various uh, uh, yes. um, So, but I am willing, and I'm sure Hal would be too, to come here a half an hour before the meeting uh, and sit down with uh, code oscillators and and those of you who have not learned the code, we can at least start off the basic stuff. But really, that's the part that is the hardest part. And then you have to build up speed, you have to learn about word groupings, yeah. and pretty soon, instead of hearing 
C and a Q, you're hearing it all together. Yep, hearing the words as opposed to the letters. And uh, uh, you have to, especially old guys like me, because I can't write. I can copy 30, 40 words a minute, but I can't write 25 words a minute. I can't write that fast. So I copy in my head and make notes, and I'm sure Joel does it the same way. Of course, if it's a, a de-expedition or something, you know what's coming back at you when you send him, you know, 599 or, or whatever. And field day is easier, too. You, you may have 40, 50 word burst, but you know what the guy's going to be saying, basically, you know, and it's not as hard that way. But the, you will start hearing words and not letters. You spend time, and he says A, B, C, and you're writing A and B and C and trying to remember the individual letters, you, you're not going to make it. It's going to be a little rough. So uh, you eventually get to where you can uh, hear, if somebody says uh, from, F-R-O-M, you'll hear the word as quick as he says it. You can see it in the context of the sentence. You can guess what the next word is going to be before he even sends it sometimes. But uh, it's um, the code tapes be great. I, back in the day, we had 78 RPMs and 45s and some other stuff, and, uh, but it wasn't as good as Barry sending CW to me at the time, you know. And I think uh, in, uh, in a, I've caught several code classes over the years in, in, a, in a group. It's a little bit harder when you got more than one people, uh, one person because they're at different levels, you know, and it's hard to teach it four or five different levels at the same time. But, um, yeah, if someone was interested, but here again, if, if you're going to be a CW operator, you've got to not take it lightly. You've got to say, this is what I want to do and do it. I know it, some guys have middle blocks to it. I, I've got ham friends right now that as quick as they got their five words from in as a novice and finally made the 13 words of men as a general. They chunked the key. I had one friend of mine had it bronzed like a pair of baby shoes. And it's, <laughs> it's hanging on his wall now, never to be used again. But, um, so you gotta be serious about it. You gotta be, say, yes, I wanna learn CW because it's not easy. It's not easy. Like Joel, um, my mom and dad be, would be going somewhere and uh, I would put all the road signs, as I told Bill, I put all the road signs in, in like Joel was talking about into CW in my head, and that seemed to help me. And um, I taught my first cousin the entire alphabet one night at a football game. It wasn't going too well. <laughs> and so it, kids learn it faster than the grown ups, too, I'm, I can assure you. But uh, if, I have to say this, that, and I would encourage the Bill to get himself an HF radio that he can tune in to the frequencies that W1AW sends. And they send an alternate uh, grouping of, of, of uh, code. But every other day, they may start off with five words per minute. And the other day, they'll start off with 30 words That's right. five words per minute. And it's always better to start off as the highest speed you can and then if you can't get that, well, fine, go down to the little bit lower level. But nonetheless, you still have to feel comfortable no matter what stage you're on. Maybe you only have learned 10, uh, 10 letters. It's still important for you to hear that. That's off the air, even better. Off the air is best. Yeah. So almost all of you have HF radios. Uh, go to your QST or go online and find out what those frequencies are, and they're on. Every night. Even on one. Yep, and, it, and it's published in QST for the entire month. Even tele, a teleprinter schedules are even on there now, and I guess uh, other dis, uh, communications. So the are also That's correct. At 15 words That's correct. And uh, if you want to just practice at 15 Even back in the days, you know, we have the Armed Forces Day crossband contest every year, you know, the, uh, the hams talking to the uh, uh, Whiskey Alpha Romeo and November Sierra Sierra on those uh, Navy and uh, Army stations at the Pentagon. And uh, back in the day, you know, the, the um, um, what's the guy that, uh, let's see, who was McNamara? McNamara was, and the re reason I know he was because I copied the uh, message from him and they sent it 25 words a minute. In 1968, it's called Vietnam Days, and McNamara was the Secretary of Defense. Yeah, and I don't. I, they do that now, but I think they do it on ready and uh, some digital mode. But um, what's the average speed on, on CW on, on the air? 
I, uh, if I want to rag chew with someone, I call CQ 20, 25 words per minute because that's going to weed out uh, what I call the slowsters and not, nothing wrong with being slow, but it's boring a, a little bit sometimes. There is a group of hams uh, called straight, C, uh, uh, straight Key Century Club. Club, yeah. There you go. And uh, you can belong to that. These guys are poking along at five words per minute, and they enjoy that. And, I, and certainly, you can be a participant of that. They have their uh, all kinds of uh, awards that they give out for how many contacts they make and whatnot. So um, they hang around from 7100 to 7125. And they have a net called the Sunrise Net every morning around 8 o'clock on 7123. And it's about 10 words a minute, something like that. And it is a, gr a good group of folks. Old guys. You know, I think the average age of a ham nowadays is what, in their 50s? Not older. <laughs> it's not and when I was, uh, had my, uh, first got my ticket, they had the Georgia Teenage Net, you know on the uh, 75 meters, and I uh, had all kind of teenage radio clubs. And now, I think this year I've worked two guys uh, under 21 on CW, two. Worked one guy that was a KM4, and I said, well, he's a new ham. Well, he's a new ham, but uh, he'd uh, retired from the Navy after 30 years as a radio operator, so that wasn't, CW wasn't a problem for him. But there's a lot of guys on there, there's one, and I know, I don't know if Joel's heard him or not, he's got this little um, merchant marine routine he goes through when he's warming up. They used to have warm-ups, not just bees, but real warm-ups. And he sends Ben's best bent wire. And it's W9ZN, you can Google that call letter, and there's a lot of information uh, uh, on him out there. And I've talked to him several times, and he will operate at the speed you want to. If you want to run at 60 words a minute, Bill, W9ZN, can run at 60 words per minute. But he's very comfortable at any speed you want to go. And he's a nice guy. He lives in a high rise in Chicago, believe it or not. And he's a retired a merchant marine and also was a disc jockey back in the day, in the rock and roll days. That's true. Yeah, well, they got some of those real high speed nets, and the Europeans are still into CW, even the young guys, and they've got, to, they have some contests where if you, if you can't copy 100 words per minute, you don't even enter the contest. Now, 100 words per minute is a blur, you know, that's all it is, and it takes a, a mind to decode that, because I don't believe you can decode 100 words a minute on the computer. I don't believe that it can, because there's a lot of different, um, Sling, you know, a guy's accents sometimes shows up on CW, especially if you're using a bug. How can you determine, can you distinguish between someone sending by hand versus somebody using a computer? Easily. We were just talking about that. I was complaining about the Georgia QSO party, me and David was, about guys calling CQ at 30 words a minute, but they couldn't receive it. And if it's perfect, you can bet it's on the keyboard. Yeah, well, um, one of the size on the ditch do you like? 550 hertz. I think um, as you uh, become older, maybe the low, low tone sound better to you. How about you, Joel? I listen at uh, 400 or less. Okay, K4PI does that. Because on 160, uh, the lower tones are not as interfered with by the static crashes and the high frequency mm -hmm. hiss or whatever that's uh, bothering you. And so I, um, I listen to it at that, at that uh, uh, tone. The best way to figure out what your tone is is to tune across the station calling CQ or, or if they're in a conversation with another guy and maybe they're a little weak or in the noise and tune to where you hear them better, and that tone's gonna be the one that's, uh, that's best for you. 
Now, on a lot of the uh, radios nowadays, you can you can vary that. You can on my rig, and I listen at 550 hertz. If I go 400 hertz, it's a little annoying to me. I can't hardly get down there. But I know Mike sometimes goes even lower than that because he's having some hearing issues, he told me. Is more communication done in abbreviation or full sentence? Most definitely abbreviation. Um, you can read anything without the vowels. And I never use a vowel unless, you know, the beginning or something like that. But uh, these uh, abbreviations have been used by the old railroad telegraphers all through years. That's where 73 came from, uh, from the telegraphers of the old. And, um, you know, if, if I abbreviated uh, a word to you and it was CKT, what would you think that word means? Circuit. And, uh, and, and, huh? <laughs> Clicking, cricket. And uh, we use uh, for A and D and, and, not, and this came from the railroad guys, we use ES instead of A and D. Anything to get rid of the, um, as, as many dits and dodges as you don't need, that's the reason I'm Hal instead of Harold, that's my real name. And it's just too many letters. I'm still going to use the word Hal. I knew him first, but Harold. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we probably met when you first come into town. Looking for a capacitor, I believe. <laughs> when you're changing the um, frequency that you're listening to, um, does that have any effect about zero beating? Well, some of the reasons got a zero beat. Uh, do you know what it sounds like when you're zero beating a tone? Well, you actually hear, yeah, you hear the, you can actually hear the cycles. And when you don't hear anything, you're zero beat. And uh, that's, called beat that's exactly right. And that's when you know you're dead on someone's frequency that way. And sometimes, in my, in my experience, is that some tones, like for instance, maybe 500 hertz or maybe 600 hertz, it's easier to hear that than in the lower tones for me. So I, if I want to be zero beat, uh, we'll use a higher mm -hmm. tone And nowadays, and I don't know why, but I have to, I keep my RT on all the time because uh, stations, I guess because of the way they hear or something like that, lots of times I call CQ and he comes back to me somewhere else, you know, a 50, 60 hertz up to band or something. So I just stay where I am and tune him in with the RT, keep from you know, screwing everything up. But, um, I notice that more now than I, than I used to. But uh, uh, most people in here would be novice, say to you and Joel, maybe Bill, David. Uh, but uh, I start. I got a straight key mm -hmm. because of the nostalgia of it. Yeah, yeah. I learned on. I wish I'd learned to listen first and send later because that's the method. Well, that's true. It hurts me people to learn to decode first and then learn to send later. But uh, I had a friend that had an iambic key, and I tried it, and, I, and it was messing me up because I'm in control with a straight key. I'm, I'm not having to think about as much as mm -hmm. sit here going back and forth between dips and dogs like that. I'm in control. We have some straight key, you know, nets and whatever. The problem for me with straight key is my wrist, uh, you know, gets tired pretty quick. And I think that has to do with age, too. But, uh, Would you recommend a person starting out with a straight key? Uh, most definitely. I recommend that you don't buy the straight key until you can copy 10 words per minute. Yeah. Because you're going to get into some very bad habits. Yeah, that's very true. They even got... A, they even got... Uh, a, um, a letter now for at. Jones, da 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 da. People sending, you know, uh, the your websites over there and what have you. You may find, you're going to find too, the punctuation is going to mess you up big time, probably. Uh, and when I went down to take uh, my test in Atlanta, they used a lot of punctuation and numbers. And at that time, when you went in to take your CW test, they'll give you a set of headphones and they had a what would be kind of antiquated by today's standard, but they had a wire that ran around the inside of the room, 
and you'd be sitting there copying, and all of a sudden you'd move your head and you'd lose it, and you had to be moving around like this to try and find that signal again before you, you lost your spot. But um, you had to copy uh, uh, five word groups was, five letters was a word, and that makes 25 letters for five words a minute or something like that. Like, so, and I don't, um, like I said, there's not any new guys much getting on CW, so I don't uh, know exactly how they're becoming CW fans. A lot of them, uh, their dads were hams, and they taught them CW. And if uh, you don't have a ham in the family and all, you need to go out and find an old white-haired guy like Joel. And <laughs> and uh, aren't me. And uh, I think Bill's interested in CW. Some people just like a challenge. Of course, today's public is um, all about instant gratification, and there's not too much uh, um, hip on the uh, challenges, especially their, our children. So uh, I think you got to really want to, or you might be wasting your time. I, I think that the uh, program that Bill is listening to, at least the tapes that I have uh, moral, I think it's excellent because they talk about the, the use letters and then they begin right away incorporating words. Yes. So that you begin to think in terms of words as sounding like um, individual letters. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael mentioned CQ, QST, you have a Q, a QTH, ES as you talked about a few minutes ago. But um, I think that's certainly far cry from how I learned. Mm -hmm book by looking at the letter and say A is da or did da and right away you can tell that um, <coughs> they got me into trouble a lot. But they're using, um, for instance, um, as opposed to calling CQ a lot of times, you can just send a dit on the frequency. There's a guy there, he'll dit dit back and then you can start a conversation right there. Matter of fact, on the Georgia State Net on GSN, um, they'll check the see how good a, a number of members that they go have check in with that. They'll go dit, and there'll be some other guy go back there dit dit, and then he'll throw his call in there. Also, I've been noticing on the uh, D expeditions now, they're using X for over. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I was listening to JT1CO was on this morning in Mongolia, and he was doing it that way. Plus, he was using a, maybe a keyboard because he, he could hit the overdrive button when he was sending the exchange. And uh, he'd, he'd be calling CQ at 25 words a minute, but he set the exchange and sent it at 40 or something. You know. Somewhere I, I read, and I don't know, I've been looking at a lot of different books on this, but that when we learn language as children, we learn a lot of what we learn by seeing and hearing the words. And then we go to school and they teach us the letters, but the fact is you learn language when you learn words. And with CW, this transition is the hard part for me, the transition is when I'm listening to those tapes, not trying to listen to each, in yeah. each one, but trying to listen and hear the words. That's going to slow you down, uh, trying to listen or to spell it. Yeah. Speed it up. Then. You could do that. Try doing that. You know, there was a guy named Farnsworth who decided that the best way to learn CW was space it at five words per minute, but send the letters at 20 words per minute. I do that sometimes if a guy answers a CQ at, uh, I'm calling CQ at 20 words a minute, and a guy comes back to me at 15, I won't slow the speed down, but I'll slow the spacing down for him. And that's called, if he comes back and says QRS, that means please slow down, and the, the most gentleman thing to do is to slow down. And you do need to learn your cue signals because they used a lot, especially in nets. Yeah, the, there's a bunch of them that you probably never thought were out there. Yeah, well, that, that's, <laughs> try that with your wife, you know, <laughs> come up with a cue signal. I know there's one for uh, 
you know, like I said, Ham's, uh, a lot of them grew up on beer. And they, that's where the 807 come from, you know, for a beer. But it's also got a QC, and you know that, Joel? It's QCB. I, the motivation for me was I can't, I'm restricted on antennas. Mm -hmm. So I can't change my equipment, I've got to change my mode. Uh -huh. To try to get DX. So CW, uh -huh. CW was the attraction for me to try to get into parts of the world I can't get into with sideband or in the digital mode. Particularly for me in the South Pacific. So that's, that was my attraction mm -hmm. for CW. Try to get somewhere I can't get with anything else. And nowadays, you know, this looking around the room here, and I was telling Bill this on the way up here, a lot of us are not gonna be able to stand too many more sunspot cycles. Um, and they and they said that uh, th they don't see anything getting a whole lot better for 22 years. Now think about that. How old you gonna be in 22 years? You won't be interested in DX probably, but. Uh, that's exactly right. And um, as Joel will tell you, you guys will never, never see band conditions like we have seen in the past when you'd have sunspot numbers at uh, you know, 300 or something like that. You just never will see that again, and it's amazing. There'll be some people that say, thank goodness for SPA. That's very true. That's what that's going to uh, be for, for working country. You won't work them on CW or single side band. That's for sure. Guy told me one time, he says, uh, uh, I said, he was talking about working DX, and I said, I worked at such and such station the other day. He said, yeah, but you worked him on CW. I thought, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, <laughs> it's harder. But um, there's a lot of the expeditions out there now. I know that. The 3B7A came up on 160, didn't he? Uh, he was having trouble on 160. Um, I worked him on 80, uh, but um, I didn't look for him on 160 because I already had him. But he was strong on 80. There were there were a lot of hams that were disappointed that he did not did not come up. Yeah, Greg needed him on 80 and 160, and he worked him on. The, uh, the country that was most difficult, in fact, is the expeditioners did not come up on CW. On 160, they only came up on expedition mode FTA. Oh, okay. So we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, DX uh, uh, the expeditions uh, using the digital mode. Yes, sir. So they can get higher numbers, more participation. And on VHF and UHF, too. I know on six meters, you know, um, working all states on six would be hard right now but not on FTA. Um, you're just not going to see uh, conditions on six meters like they, I have seen them in the past. I've heard signals that absolutely sounded like there was no attenuation whatsoever. He, he was sitting in, out in your yard, and he'd be you know, 4,000 miles away. But uh, you, you're just not going to see that anymore. Well, on, on that same topic, although I have not experienced it, according to Mike uh, K4PIs, and down in Douglasville, um, he said that the FTA made, uh, actually JT65, uh, made an absolute huge difference on whether or not you were going to be seeing any stations working anybody uh, on EME and also on uh, normal uh, frequencies like CW. There the just weren't, wasn't anybody there. They were, everybody was on this. What I've had to do, I watched the uh, six meter cluster during the day, the map, and to get, keep from getting um, too excited, I've had to filter out digital modes because those modes will show up as working stations and they're just simply not there for CW or single sideband. So I have to filter them out altogether and they don't even show up on the map. The expeditions are kind of encouraging when you're learning from CW because all you got to do is throw your call. All you got to do is know your call, mm -hmm. five in in. You. That's exactly right. You know, AWRL says you should and you should actually give real signal reports, but that doesn't happen just like during field day. Some of those guys sit there and, and uh, 
I've got a I've got a big cover program on my laptop. These guys are just ripping it. They're just super. I mean, they're just the paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. You know, saying it like that. But and I'm not going to get in a conversation with my <coughs> with somebody like that. Mm -hmm. The the expedition, though, you know, so if you can send your call by the end of the you you can understand a little bit there. Field day same way. Fun. You can have fun with see that. I tell, tell you one thing, I enjoy ratcheting on CW, and I have for many years, but I find myself talking to the same stations over and over and over now, and where, where it used to, I didn't do that. And uh, it's because there are not many out there. There's just not any CW ratchers anymore that will want to carry on a conversation. 20 used to be my go-to band for everything on CW, but it's just not there anymore. There's a little stuff. Some of the, the expeditions come up on 20, but... Most of it's di uh, digital on 20 meters now, even. The bottom line is, if you're interested in CW, you got to be self-motivated. Bring brownies. <laughs> no, but if, if, if enough of people are interested, I'm sure Joel will be glad to help out, and I would too. The ladies included. If, if you learn the code from these tapes or whatever mode you want to use the Farnworth met method, there's just a hundred ways. All you have to do is Google uh, Morse code. That's right. There's probably 25 or more. In fact, if you go to the backside of QST where the classifiers are, there are ads in there about mm -hmm. learning the code. Um, and it's not that you need a party to learn to how to be a good CW operator. You just have to be self-motivated to learn the basics and then really listen and listen and We're saying the only way to learn to be a good golfer is to play in the same way with uh, learning CW is to get on there. Don't be, a, be afraid. I was scared to death. I can t still tell you who the first uh, station I worked on, 40 meters, and his call. He's no longer with us. It's WA4EBE -E in Abington, Virginia, was my first QSL. Mine was WA9 in CBS. CBS. K1 USN. K1 what? K1 USN. United States Navy? I've worked him before, and, 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 he's, and it has nothing to do with, uh, I, don't, I don't know if he requested that call or not, but I don't think so. I think it just showed up that way. They sent QSL for it because it was the first one I saw. I told him when I sent him the card, I told him it was my first CW contact. But um, I talked to a guy the other day up in, in Tennessee, somewhere up around Murfreesboro, and we talked for a long time and we started exchanging personal things like age and what we do and all. He told me that uh, he'd been a ham for uh, two years or something like that. And that he, he was born, he was born in the 80s sometime, late 80s. So that's, that's young for a CW ham. And we've had some young ones here in Calhoun. I don't know if you, you guys knew any of the Reeves back in the day, but Leslie Reeves, who retired from Scientific Atlanta, got his ticket and is 10 years old. Barry Wright was uh, uh, instrumental in helping him learn CW. Imagine being a child is uh, it's a lot easier. You not you don't have these preconceived notions about how hard it's going to be, and I, that's going to be too tough, and I don't want to go through that. You just do it. Anybody got anything else, Belton? At uh, Georgia, train them at some uh, nine o'clock nightly at thirty-five forty-nine. Thirty-five forty-nine. That's the regular uh, CW net frequency. The time, 9 o'clock, 35, 49, is that the training, see that training net for Georgia? The, um, we, have, we have folks that were interested in, uh, in, in giving y'all a come and teaching CW. You mentioned coming in 30 minutes before the, sure, 30 minutes before the, 
Well, maybe we started. What kind of how we would be? We would uh, students be listening, listening to what you're saying and learning to, learning to hear. You need us to have a sign up sheet tonight and see how many would be. Seriously. You know? I don't have a code oscillator anymore. Do you? Don't either. No, I have one in pieces. You can whip one out right quick. But, uh, That'd be a good project. <laughs> but uh, do we really want to start a code oscillator uh, class, or, or do we want to learn the code? But the sis would have to come up with, a, I guess you could use the uh, side tone in, you, in a key or something. It would be interesting to do that, just kind of show our hands. Well, would it be easier to start just learning to listen, learning to, and not standing, but just hearing it? Does everybody have HF capabilities at least to, to listen? Well, that's going to be the first thing. And start out on that 7100 to 7125 area, because that's where the, the, the slowsters are going to be. If you don't know the code, uh, certainly look into the handbook avenues uh, to do that. It's not something that you're going to pick up in life, but on the other hand, you can just start just about anywhere. When I was in, in school, it was in Encyclopedia Britannica. I, it's, it's the only, only information I had. Funk and Wagnall. Uh, I'm sure we're all at a different level again. I mean, some know nothing, some know maybe five words. I know, when I, took, I know when I took my test, I had to pass 20 word a minute test. So go home tonight and just learn your call in your head. You know, I say so many times now, I say these hymns nowadays can't even copy their own call letters. You, you really ought to be able to do that. You know, and they, and they still got uh, CWIDs on repeaters, but nobody can copy them. Well, thank you for inviting me up. Thanks for the brownies, Bill. And